Hello, everyone. Thank you all for taking the time to join us this afternoon. My name is TJ Mendieta, and I'm Director of Expos and Advertising for IFMA, the International Facility Management Association. I've been with IFMA nearly 24 years, and the last 15 have been specifically working with our exhibitors and sponsors to produce the expo portion of IFMA's annual conferences and events. Listen, I don't know about y'all, but the loss of in-person events over the last year due to the global pandemic hit me like a truck. Our show management team at IFMA is passionate about building an environment to foster connections between the facility management community and our valued exhibitors and sponsors. What we've come to realize is that by adapting to this new digital event environment, we are still able to provide a way for our community for, to successfully connect and build relationships. We just have to learn together how to capitalize on the unique advantages of virtual exhibiting. Joining us today is Jefferson Davis, a leading expert on B2B marketing, sales, and exhibiting. I've been a big fan of Jefferson since I first attended one of his presentations several years ago. I'm telling you, every single time I have any kind of interaction with him, I pick up a new nugget of inspiration that helps me to better serve our exhibiting partners. Jefferson has been working alongside exhibitors across all industries for 30 plus years, offering results-oriented training and guidance on how to position their exhibiting strategy to maximize ROI, ROI excuse me, for their business. It's my pleasure to produce Jefferson Davis. All right, thank you, TJ. I'm a big fan of yours too. Uh, and, mm -hmm. here's, and, and here's honestly just one of the reasons like all of you on this webinar today, over my career, I've exhibited at over 200 trade shows. And if I'm being honest here, I always felt like the only time I heard from the show producer was when they wanted a check or when they wanted to sell me something or when they sent me that, especially in the old days, that big service kit. Remember the three ring binders we used to ship out? I'm really dating myself here. But um, I always felt like that was the only time I heard from them. So I'm super excited and super honored to be partnered with a great organization like IFMA and a great show producer like TJ who cares so much about her exhibitors that she doesn't just want to rent you a virtual space or rent you concrete and hope that it works out for you. But she really gets the value of investing time and resources in educating exhibitors so tj on behalf of myself and all your exhibitors i want to say thank you so very much for that um there's a lot of people that talk uh there are a few that walk you are a walker so thank you so uh thanks for logging in everybody um maybe you've seen me around the trade show arena as tj mentioned <laughs> i it feels like i've only been doing it about 10 years but when i look on the screen uh 30 plus years um for me my mission has always been to help exhibitors make sure that every dollar and every hour that you invest in exhibit marketing, whether it live or now virtual, to make sure that it does two things. It visibly supports your core business objectives and it delivers measurable financial value beyond cost. Right, that's my mission, that's why I exist. And I'm extremely results focused and I'm also process based, right? I believe in business, most things we do can be summarized into a process. And the more you're running from show to show to show, the more you better have process, right? So what changed for me on March 13th, we are 12 days away from the big countdown, Friday, March 13th, 2020. I had 44 zero shows booked on my calendar and on Friday the 13th, they started falling like dominoes and they kept falling till every one of them canceled. And obviously put me into a little panic mode like most people. Uh, but once I got past the anger and the, and, and the blame and the denial and the stages of grief that we all go through, right? I immediately started looking where things were going. And it was obvious that virtual exhibiting was going to be our lifeline, you know, until we get through this pandemic. So what I did was I started identifying who were the major platforms 
the vendors that provide virtual exhibit platforms. And I began to research them to try to understand what were the core functional elements that exhibitors needed to master, right, to be able to get value from the virtual exhibiting arena. And what a journey it's been. I've, I'm proud to say that we've been able to train now over 2,000 exhibiting companies on how to enter the virtual arena more strategically. And so today, what I want to do today is kind of talk with you about, you know, marketing and virtual and some of the pros and some of the challenges. And I want to get you started on a planning process. And then I hope today will inspire you to jump in all in, be all in with TJ, myself, and the IFMA team uh, for Facility Fusion coming up. So let's get this party started right out of the gate. So here's one of the big messages, right? Um, during every crisis, every recession in American history, one of the first things that companies cut and reduce is the marketing budget. They reduce the marketing budget and they reduce marketing activity, right? And that's happened in this pandemic too. Maybe a lot of your organization's listening. Maybe you've lost customers, you've lost contracts, you've lost revenue, right? We all have, right? All of us. But here's every study that I could get my hands on about B2B marketing expenditures during recessions all pointed to the same conclusion. It was that companies who maintain or increase their marketing budget, their marketing activity during recessions, you may want to jot this down, experience three times the sales growth of those who reduce or cut and come out of the recession faster. So my first message to you today, if you've got a boss, an owner, a partner, a manager, who you know is saying, man, you know, business is down, times are tough, these virtual events are challenging. Uh, maybe we're just going to sit on the sidelines. I would like you to share one big message with them. In today's business arena, in today's overcommunicated society, right? Out of sight really is out of mind. And I think one of the most dangerous things that any of us could do, myself included, right, is go dark, right? Because your customers, right? There's a lot of things going on with your customers. So you've got to stay visible. And, you know, as TJ mentioned, we will all acknowledge that virtual events are not a replacement for what we do when we get together live at Facility Fusion or World Workplace. They're, you know, they're not a replacement. So we're not gonna sit here and try to act like they are, but you definitely can still get what you want, but you're gonna have to approach it a little differently, which I'll talk about today. So my first message is out of sight is out of mind. Stay visible, right? One of the reasons I say that is people's attention to media and to content has increased radically, dramatically over the last several months and will continue to do so over the coming months. People are reading more, they're watching. Hey, we've all been knocked off center, right? Most of the things that we took for granted and the things that we believed to be true, it was like someone, someone kicked the chair out from under us. And, and we've been in scramble mode since March of last year. And we're, many of us are still in scramble mode. So th the people's attention to content is higher than before. Number three ties back to what I said at the beginning. It's possible that your competitors have reduced their marketing spend and their activity. And what that'll mean for you as a marketer is less noise in the marketplace, uh, a chance for you to get a bigger share of mind, a bigger share of attention. Right, so that's another good reason to stay marketing. And number four is maybe the best one of all. This pandemic has created new problems and new needs, right? New problems, new needs, and that means opportunity. 
right? For all of us, new opportunities, these new problems that our customers are having, facilities, especially that have been with these lockdowns and the lack of events, have all kinds of new problems they're facing, right? And new needs. So they're looking out into the industry to you, to me, all of us, right? How can we help? I think now and over these next several months is the perfect time, right? To continue to expand your visibility in the market and keep that brand awareness high. And for many of you, maybe grow it and increase it. So when you think about, there, there are different channels, if you will. I'm gonna talk very high level here, 30,000 foot, but advertising, right? So advertising, you are you know paying to buy space, be it print, be it mail, be it digital, online, whatever, right? The primary focus of your advertising is about building awareness and interest in product services with the goal of generating leads, right? Sponsorships, right? Now, sponsorships are another opportunity, but they operate on a different cognitive process. People engage psychologically with sponsorships differently. They tend to be more about influencing the customer's perceptions of the company. So while the advertising is about product service, awareness, lead generation, the sponsorship is more about the customer's perceptions of the sponsoring company, right? And it's this perception shift that can increase purchase consideration for near term and down the line. So as you look at marketing and you look at how we're gonna do that and you look at these two big rocks, um, the magic's in the mix. You wanna do some advertising to focus specific solutions and you wanna do some sponsorships to position your company in the mind of your audience. So why a virtual booth, right? Uh, again, some of you, you know, for many events, uh, including if my, this is the second foray into the virtual jungle, right? And the reality is that we all got forced into it in the first go round, right? We were rushed into it. We had these live events and they canceled and if my cared so much that they went to battle to fight to try to keep you visible, to try to keep you in front of your audience. And we had some struggles, right? So some of you may be asking, well, we've done that this before and it didn't turn out so well. Well, um, here's my core thought. I think you still got a business to run. I think you still got customers to serve. I think you still have marketing and sales goals you're trying to achieve. And your virtual exhibit program can support all three of those goals, marketing, sales, and customer relationship management. Uh, number two, here's a big one. Some of the other channels aren't working very well right now. You know, with the pandemic and social distancing and all these company policies about who can get in and can't get into their business, their buildings, their facilities, right? In-person sales calls, right? They're not working very well. <laughs> Harder to get, not get many, right? And the other thing, everybody's running to email, right? You know, maybe some of us are leaning too much on email, but the average business person today is getting 188 emails a day, right? So the inbox is glutted, right? And the other problem, these um, the spam filters, the algorithms seem to be changing daily, right? I have customers that I've been doing business with for 10 years. Out of the blue, I'm landing in their junks filter. So I don't think I can rely on email, right? And it's harder to get in-person face-to-face sales calls right now, right? So those traditional channels are not working quite as well. And as I mentioned before, what really gets me out of bed at six in the morning and keeps me burning till 10, 11 at night is new problems and new needs. Right, because again, for all of us listening here today, that equals opportunity. And people's minds are wide open. They're, they're more open right now. Hey, you know, during the last nine years when business was just booming, right? People were just trying to get through the day, right? To take care of the projects, manage the events in their facilities. Right now, all of a sudden, with everything knocked off center, people are in scramble mode. And when people are in scramble mode, man, their minds get really wide open. I mean, some of the participation and registration level we're seeing on webinars is, I mean, we used to struggle to be in the 100 range. Now we're getting up in the 300, 400, 500 people showing up, right? 
And that virtual presence, that virtual exhibit is going to help you stay visible. It's going to help you continue to interact with your customers or prospects. It's going to show your support for the industry. And if you do it right, it'll help you generate leads that ultimately will convert to sales if you do it right. Okay. So remember I told you, um, you know, I, I really am results focused and I'm process based. So after working from may through november with 18 shows and after working training consult over 2000 exhibiting companies everything coalesced i took some time to organize virtual exhibiting marketing into a process right process based what it is it's a framework that outlines the strategic steps that an exhibitor must take if they're going to execute an effective program that's going to achieve specific outcomes and deliver that measurable value beyond cost. And so analyzing the first step, you're analyzing the event and the platform to make sure you got a good fit. Optimizing, which we're going to be working on with you carefully, is optimizing all of the attendee facing components of your platform to make sure they're the best they can be. And the red, number three, drive traffic. Most exhibitors who have struggled in the digital arena so far, what's behind their struggle is the red drive. They just haven't figured out how to drive enough of the right people uh, to their virtual exhibit. So we're going to make sure that you know how to do that. We're also going to make sure that your virtual presence, we're going to give you the best of what we've learned over the last year on how to optimize. And then engage, right? What do you do? How do you leverage the interactive components of the platform to engage visitors, right? And capture, capture information, capture leads, capture data, use the analytics, the data, the metrics from the platform. And then measure, how do you know if you executed well? How do you really assess where you got value? How do you measure if you ultimately got return on investment, right? And then number seven on the far right is leverage. You know, because the platform is often open and accessible beyond the, the days of the live event, how do you leverage that opportunity, right? Because you have these digital assets up there that you can still drive traffic to and still create action. How do you leverage that? Okay, so we're going to really, for the sake of the IFMA program, we're going to really dive into optimize, drive, engage, and capture. I'm going to give you the best of what I've learned over the um, next this webinar and, and the next. So let's talk about what makes a virtual booth different, uh, unique. Uh, number one is no travel, right? You know, you don't have to get on airplanes. So what does that save you? It saves you time. It saves you money for all of us, right? Number two is the cost. It's significantly less. Um, you know, the budgeting rule of thumb for a live expo, it, you may want to write this down, is floor space cost minimally times three, ideally times five. So if your 10 by 10 space, the space rental cost is 4,000, your budget should be minimally 12,000, ideally 20,000. It doesn't cost you anywhere near that much to do a virtual event. And, and that makes it easier to get a return on your investment. It's not as hard, right? The bar is lower, right? Uh, number three is the potential expanded reach. If a person has a computer and they have internet access, they have the ability to attend a digital virtual event. So potentially, we can reach a larger audience with digital events. Uh, number four, I mentioned a moment ago, the longer exposure. Although the event is live on April 2021, uh, it is accessible through May 21st. So we've essentially taken what normally might have been a two or three day event and now turned it into a month, right? You've got a longer window to take advantage of this, right? Number five, small exhibitors, if you are a, a inline booth, a 10 by 10, a 10 by 20, or maybe even a small island, you're gonna, you gotta love this one. <laughs> a 
booth size in the virtual world does not matter. It is a level playing field. Every one of you, I don't care if you are a, um, you know, million dollar a year company com competing with a billion dollar a year company, right? In, in the digital world, you can win this game. You can get your share. You can compete, right? It's a lot different, right? So that playing field is level and smaller exhibitors, I, you probably get, you should get really excited about that. Number six, the digital footprint, right? I know every exhibitor, I've been, again, 30 years as a consultant trainer and exhibiting productivity expert. Exhibitors have struggled with how do we measure, right? They haven't really had access to the data and the analytics, right, and the metrics. Well, that's one of the beautiful things about the digital world. We have a lot more data and analytics at our fingertips. So we can assess a lot of things, right? That digital footprint that we normally wouldn't have. And number seven, this, is, this one is really important, okay? People go to live events, right? Like if we were doing Facility Fusion Live, they, they come to learn, they come to network, they come to source. Now, also, now, the fourth reason I didn't put on here, but we all know to be true, they come to have fun too, right? I mean, we love going to shows. We're all waiting to get back in that ring. I know I am, right? but they're coming to learn, right? They're coming to network, they're coming to source. And all three of those reasons are still valid in the digital world, right? They're still valid. So I'm sharing this with you because some of you may be, again, a marketing manager a director of marketing a marketing assistant maybe you've got a cfo or a cso or a ceo who's a little skeptical a little jaded you know looking at saying i don't know these digital events they don't work right i don't see the advantage i don't see the benefit that's why i'm sharing this with you i'm giving you the ammunition to go back to maybe help them change the frame by which they're looking at it right so that really does raise the question that some of you may be grappling with. Maybe you've exhibited at another digital event and maybe you've struggled, right? Can you actually win this game? Is it possible for you to win the virtual game? And the answer is absolutely yes, okay? Oh, my uh, screen freaked out here, so let me go smaller. I have no idea what just happened, let me get smaller. But here's the key, right? Here, Here's the three keys. Number one, you can't look at a virtual event the same way you look at a live. You can't approach it the same way. You, you, you've got to look at it through a different frame or lens. Number two, you've got to know the obstacles. Write these three words down. Here's the three obstacles that you have to have a plan to work through. Driving traffic, engaging visitors, and capturing information more information than just what's embedded in the auto capture, which we're going to talk about in our next step. But you have to know the obstacles and you've got to have a plan, right? How am I going to jump these hurdles? I promise you, you can jump them. I'm going to give you everything I got. TJ is going to give you everything she has. The entire IFMA team is going to give you everything they have to position you to win the game. So you can win the game but you got to look at it differently. Okay, so let me get back to, now I need to talk a little bit about differences, right? Because this is not Pollyanna. I'm not here to give you pie in the sky, right? I'm, I'm here to, I'm a realist, right? I'm a, people have called me pragmatic and I sometimes wonder what that means. <laughs> but here's what makes it different, right? You, me, IFMA, we don't have as much control over how much time a person spends on a virtual event. When they're logged onto a computer, maybe they're still working from home. I just saw a study that said 48% of North America, 48% of employees in North America are still working at home, right? The, the distraction level at home is higher, right? Uh, there's a lot of states where the children are not back in school yet. And so you've got someone trying to do their job and trying to make sure their kids are logged on virtually learning and there's a lot of distraction. We don't have as much time. So we got to make sure, you got to make sure that what you do with your content 
it, it delivers very real value that it's concise, right? It's efficient. It's teaching them something. It's delivering value for the attendee and they can get into your exi digital exhibit and they can interact with your content and they can walk out of there knowing something they didn't know when they walked in that will be valuable to them. It'll make them want to take a next step with you. Okay. Um, the distraction level is higher as we talked about. Key point, please circle this one. If you get nothing else out of this first session here, which by the way, we're only gonna scratch the surface here today. In our next webinar, I'll show you at the end, we're gonna attack those three big challenges. Please remember this. In the digital world, people do not walk up and down the virtual exhibit aisles like they would at Facility Fusion Live and just fall into booths at random. It's not happening, right? So you've got to make sure that content, content is king, write that phrase down, in, in the digital arena, content is king. And I'm gonna press you, oh, especially a little bit in this session, but a lot in the next session to find your voice, to find your value proposition, to find the three things that you're gonna teach somebody quickly in your digital booth that's gonna add value to their world that you're bringing the best content, right? And then calendaring, the ability to get on their agenda and on your agenda, right? And so that would mean trying to get pre-event people committed that, yes, I'm coming to the event. Yes, I'm visiting with your uh, digital booth. And the highest and best outcome you could ask for is calendaring, where it's an appointment on their calendar, an appointment on yours. Most of you are probably aware of an incredible resource and it's free. It's called Calendly, C-A-L-N-D-L-Y. It's a game changer. If you're not using it, write that down right when you get off this webinar. Go look at Calendly. Uh, appointments equal conversion. I've been using Calendly now for about six months. It's completely revolutionized my business. Uh, and I would encourage you to integrate some form of a calendaring function into your virtual program to get in the mind on the agenda of the right people. And number three, rich media. That means if you're going to have video in your booth, and you will, you've got to design it a certain way. I've looked at thousands of videos already. I've seen some good ones. I've seen a lot of bad ones. So I'm gonna share with you a process on how to script and how to build your video content that grabs the right people's attention, that quickly tells your story, that excites them and makes them want to take some next action with you, okay? So here's one of my first like pro tips of the afternoon here. And I'm speaking to all of you who have multiple products or multiple services. You have multiple solutions. If you have multiple solutions, do not try to bring, feature, and promote them all in your digital arena. This is one of the biggest mistakes I've seen so far. Write this phrase down, less is more. So I'm gonna ask you to analyze your solutions and I'm gonna ask you to put them into a hierarchy. And I'm gonna ask you, once you do this three-step hierarchy, leave everything else home. You see, once you have the engagement with a prospect, you can cross-sell anything, but don't try to be everything to everybody in the digital arena. You'll set yourself up for failure. Less is more. If they look at your virtual booth and you're trying to feature 10, 12 different solutions, I'm telling you, they're gonna be confused and they're gonna walk out. Right, so narrow it down. So here's the top of the list. N-E-W, new. Write this quick phrase down. New is a magnet. New is a magnet. It's the primary reason people go to live expos. If you stop 100 people walking in to the Facility Fusion Vision Hall live and ask them, what are you hoping to see in this exhibit hall? I'm telling you that 92 out of 100 are gonna say what and who is new. If you got something new, that's your showstopper, that's your hook, feature that. Okay, if you don't have something new, which of your solutions are really speaking to 
top of the mind challenges, problems, struggles, issues, projects, concerns. What's trending? What's hot? Which of your solutions are hot? Which ones are trending? Which ones are addressing top of the mind issues? Feature that. And, and beyond those two, most of you, if you're a multiple service company, you probably have the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your revenue comes from 20% of your solutions. Reinforce your position on your top 20%, your pillar products or services. Beyond that, leave everything else at home. Again, you can cross sell anything when you have the engagement. The biggest mistake you can make in the digital arena is trying to be everything to everybody because you'll end up nobody to anybody, okay? So I could quit right now on that because if you followed that one, I'm already moving you into the top 20% of exhibitors right there. Okay, critical success factors, right? Number one, top of the list, make sure that the keywords that you're using throughout your digital content and make sure that the product categories that you're listed it in, that you're using the right keywords and you're in the right categories. This is one of the key ways that attendees find exhibitors in the digital space. Number two, interactive, educational, problem solving. The, that's what needs to go on in your booth, right? It's quickly interactive, they're learning something and it's addressed on solving a problem or seizing an opportunity. And it's as experiential as you possibly can make it in the 2D world of digital exhibiting. It's gotta be worthy of their time. It's gotta be worthy of their attention. And you have to be able to voice that and give them that reason. Here's why you should give us five minutes while you're at Facility Fusion. And it's gotta be focused on their problems, their needs, right? Number three, you gotta promote. You gotta be proactive. You gotta turn over every stone before, during, and including after the event. You gotta proactively promote your participation. The biggest mistake you can do is register for the event, upload your digital assets, have your staff log on, sit around and wait for attendees to fall into your digital space. If you've tried that before, you probably know how well that works. It doesn't work, not in the digital arena. See, here's the thing. IFMA is going to spend every dollar, they're gonna turn over every stone to pr aggressively promote the event and drive traffic. But the best advice I can give you is do not just rely on their efforts. You've got to throw your hat into the ring. In fact, I'm going to give you a, a budgeting rule of thumb for digital events. Remember we said the live is uh, floor space times three to five? I'm going to recommend that whatever the, the investment in your digital space is, that you multiply that by at least double it. So if it's $2,000 for your digital space, I want you to invest at least 2,000 in promoting your participation to drive the right people to your digital space, right? You, you cannot just show up and hope. That phrase I use even in the live world, you cannot exhibit by hope, right? It's, it's not going to work in the digital world. You gotta do a little promotion, okay? Second, number four, is when people visit your digital booth, typically there's auto capture. You capture some information depending on what action they take. And we're gonna talk more about that. And by the way, today's not a technical platform training at all. Today's giving you the big picture of what we're doing and what you're gonna to need to do to win this game, right? But you gotta capture more information. You gotta get the visitor to collaborate and commit to a clear, next action so if you do these four things you are positioning your digital virtual booth for success okay let's talk about planning here i want you to get into the mindset uh the dates of the event i believe are may so we're in uh, pretty good shape right now you're ahead of the curve which is good it's act jefferson it's actually april 21st through 22nd thank you tj i apologize for that uh so we're what seven weeks out eight weeks out yep seven right in the sweet spot hey by the way by the way jot this down too. uh two important pieces of research that came out in december uh most digital events in terms of attendee pre-registration 
don't hit critical mass until two to three weeks before the digital event. So they don't hit critical mass till two to three weeks. And number two, listen carefully, the average digital attendee plans their agenda, what they're gonna do and when, five to seven days before the event. That is radically different than a live event. Okay, and that's really good news for you. And it's good for you to understand as an exhibitor because IFMA is gonna do everything they can do to promote. It gives you the power to promote. And if you get your, your value proposition and your channels set, it gives you the ability to win the game because you now understand where the sweet spots are on promotion. Okay, so let's talk about booth planning guidelines here. It all starts with reasons, right? So the question I want each of you to ask right now is why are you or why should you be exhibiting, right, at Facility Fusion? Is it about customer relationship management? Are you trying to protect your competitive accounts, your accounts from competitors? Is it about cross-selling your existing customers? Is it about uh, getting some time with them that you haven't been able to get over the last year, right? Is it about lead generation, driving new revenue? Is it about branding, brand awareness, brand presence, brand positioning, brand differentiation? Is it about educating? Is it about driving sales? Is it about thought leadership? What else? Why are you exhibiting? I would encourage you to jot down your top two or three reasons. But here's the thing, reasons are not enough. You gotta shift reasons to goals. And you can see on the left in the digital arena, the goals uh, it could be defined in terms of how many booth visits from what types of organizations, what mix of customers, prospects, potential new opportunities, uh, video chats, video meetings, right? Pre-scheduled meetings, you could be setting goals. Pre-scheduled meetings. Number two, be around video chats. Uh, lead generation, how many leads, right? Of what type? Uh, announcements, education, what are you gonna teach, right? Social connections, are you trying to build your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram uh, connections and followings? This is a great place to do it. What about your brand impact? How do you want this experience to, what do you want the attendee to walk away from your digital experience? Knowing, feeling, and doing, right? So you think about these goals. Remember, you start with reasons, then you move to goals, okay? From there, you get clear. You get a crystal definition of who is your ideal visitor. And I encourage you to have a mix of customers, prospects, and potential new opportunities. Come in with a mix. That way, you'll give, be sure you get value from the event. Now, you got to develop your messaging, your value proposition. You're going to have to give them a clear, compelling what's in it for me reason to come visit your virtual booth. They're not just going to stumble in there, right? Now you got to pick your communication channels. What channels? Advertising, email, social media, uh, web, you know, web ads, landing pages, direct mail. Good time to get back in the mailbox. You know why? Nobody else is doing it. It's a really good reason. So you're going to define what channels you're going to use to promote. You're going to use an integrated marketing approach. Now you got to develop the content. What are you going to feature in your booth? Uh, and how are you going to feature that in terms of video, in terms of copy, in terms of documents, in terms of links, all of that, right? Then you got to optimize the functionality of your booth. And then you got to promote, 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 promote. If there's one way you're going to win this game, it's number eight. Make sure every promotion that goes out has a, has a crystal clear value proposition. I want you to step out of your frame as a seller. I want you to step into your frame as a potential customer before you send out anything from a marketing and ask yourself, if I read this, would I be compelled to visit this booth? If not, back to the drawing board. Clear call to action. And finally, you got to get your virtual staff ready, you know, because you're going to have the Zoom meetings and the ability to do the video. That's a different animal and there's some nuances there, some things that we need to know that we're gonna talk about in a future session, okay? So, a new and improved platform for the next digital event. IFMA you know, learned a lot, like all of us, from our first go round and they did a lot of diligence to try to find a platform that they felt would, could take you to the next level if you were in a previous one or maybe in another one. 
And I'm just giving you kind of a sneak peek here. You can see with the exhibit hall here, they're going to be able to click on your logo. When they do that, that's going to pull you to a page here. It's going to have all these digital assets, right? Your logo, uh, company description, which we're going to talk about in our next webinar. You're going to have two videos, PDF files, your social media resources, the ability to click and enter a Zoom room and have face-to-face -face meetings and a, and a contact form that'll help you be, to be able to capture visitor information. Again, today is not technical training in our next session, and I'm sure Grit's gonna provide something also. In our next session, we're gonna get into optimizing. I just want you at a high level aware of where we're at and why we're doing what we're doing. Now, uh, I don't know how many of you are on board yet, but remember I said that the cost to exhibit virtually was a lot lower? Well, it is. Uh, it's $2,000 for a virtual exhibit. And you can see the functionality that comes with your exhibitor profile, which you really got to write that profile. And I'm going to guide you how to do that. You're going to have access to an attendee mailing list. It won't have emails and phone numbers, but you're going to get it. You're going to get digital resources to promote you and your staff to complimentary full conference. So you can come and learn too. And you're going to have two priority points for Facility Fusion 22 uh, to give you a leg up on selecting live, which we're all waiting to get back to. So $2,000 is the uh, starting, you know, the investment, which is not a lot of money, right? In the scheme of things, certainly a lot less than uh, live. Easy to get an ROI on 2000. Now, there are some additional opportunities here. Remember, we said you're going to want to market and uh, you're going to want to move quickly because there are limits to these but you're going to have the ability if you're a virtual exhibitor or a premier level to have attendee broadcast emails right uh which would be sent april 5th through the 19th uh the content deadline on that is march 8th so uh again it's limited in number you you want to move on that really quick because you know we don't want to overwhelm the attendees with hundreds and hundreds of emails Th then you'll have the ability to get a post show email to all the event attendees that can be sent but you want to get ahead of the curve because the content deadline for that is March 26th. And finally, uh, the Expo Scavenger Hunt, okay? Uh, your virtual booth will be a check-in station where the attendees kind of visit. And we're, we want to make sure they're not visiting just to win. We want to make sure if you're part of that program that there's something for them to learn of value. So when they go there, they're not just clicking in and clicking out, that they spend more time in your booth. So uh, we've covered a lot of ground here, TJ. I'm gonna take a look in the question queue. On Thursday, March 18th, we are going to hit the three big pillars of optimize, drive, and engage. And by th that point, I will have gone through the GRIT platform end-to-end, -end, and I'm gonna show you everything that we've learned over the last year on how to do those three things. Uh, optimize your content, drive the right traffic. You don't need a ton of traffic to win, you just need the right and then how to engage people in your digital or, or booth. So TJ, I'm gonna take a look at the question queue. Uh, while I do, any additional thoughts or comments? Um, not really. I did want to touch a little bit on some of the digital resources and the opportunities that we offer to our exhibitors at no additional cost to help promote your presence at our um, show. So as Jefferson mentioned, we do provide an, a registered attendee mailing list pre and post show available to all exhibitors at no additional charge. Once again, no emails and phone numbers. You know, we want to be cognizant and, and protective of, of people's privacy, but we do provide mailing addresses. And at the minimum, it's a great opportunity for you to review the list, see if there's any particular companies that you've been trying to reach out to, or maybe some current customers on there to send them a personal invite. Hey, we'll be at the show. Come check us out. The other uh, key feature is the digital resources. Our marketing team does a great job of creating these beautiful ads that we'll share with you that says, I'm an exhibitor, I'm in a sponsor, and some other general artwork that you can share on your social media channels, in your newsletters, your customer emails, things like that. So just be um, be sure that if, if this is something that you're interested in, that you do take full advantage of this. There's um, lots of opportunities and we'd love to help, um, help hold your hand and get you there. So TJ, the first question, and it's in the uh, realm of opportunities was um will are you guys going to be sending out some form of like a swag bag to attendees prior to the event 
Um, we are actually not going to be doing that um, for this particular event. No, we're not. Okay, thank you. Uh, this next question, I, I think I can answer this, but um, can you show us what the virtual booth experience might look like from the attendees' perspective? Um, what I'm going to show you in the next session, I am going to show you the 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 attendees' virtual journey. So I want to show you from when they register and they log in what the event looks like in terms of the virtual event lobby, how they find the exhibits, how they get to individual exhibitors, and then what your virtual booth is going to look like, and then step-by-step -step guidance on how to optimize all of the um, um, functionality of your booth. Um, so next question, TJ, in your wheelhouse, um, can attendees give you their email address if they visit or attend your booth? Sure, so what happens with that, for every booth visitor that a particular exhibitor has, we do provide a report back to that specific exhibitor, lets you know everyone who attended, who visited your booth just by clicking in on it, um, and we will include their full contact information at that point. So you'll get their name, job title, company name, address, phone, and email for anyone who actually steps into your booth. It's basically the digital version of a lead retrieval device. Okay, thank you. This next question I think is in my wheelhouse, but TJ, feel free to add on to this after I address it. Should we be sponsoring or exhibiting at events if our competitors are there? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, I would consider that a top reason. Here's why, right? Most trade show attendees today are using their participation in shows, live and virtual, Write this phrase down, uh, Michelle, you're listening here, to revalidate existing buying relationships. There has been a lot of change in terms of needs and problems. There's also been a lot of internal change in terms of staff, right? So uh, some people are like, well, if my competitors are gonna be there, I don't necessarily wanna be there. I would argue if my competitors are gonna be there, I need to be there because I need to circle the wagons around my customers. Because you got to know, like, today's customers are continually asking the question, are you still the best overall source? The best combination of quality, value, price, service, support. And again, if they have new needs, new problems, and new, maybe your champion, your internal contact has been let go or furloughed or uh, has moved on, the door is going to be wide open for the competition. So I would say uh, absolutely, uh, if, if your competitors are uh, sponsoring and or exhibiting at the event live or virtual, uh, and it's the right event for you in terms of the audience, yeah, you totally want to be there. Anything you would add to that, TJ? No, I concur with everything you said. If I put on my attendee hat when I personally attend an educational conference in my specific industry, I specifically do look for those vendors who offer services that we're already using. Just to Jefferson's point, um, I know we've got this great XYZ company we're using for whatever service, but when I go to these conferences and the expos, I'm looking for other companies that offer that same service, but maybe at an elevated level. Maybe there's new technology or new innovation or new service that I wasn't aware of. So it's actually more important to me to go and find out what companies are offering services that I'm already taking advantage of versus a company that, you know, maybe not something I'm already doing. So for sure, I, if your competition's there, you need to be there. That That's my opinion as well. Yeah, that's well said. I, I think of um, the music artist Janet Jackson, and she sung a song called, What Have You Done For Me Lately? <laughs> so, you know, hey, um, you know, you, you never, customers are continually revalidating. Um, and so that would be a good reason. Uh, next question, TJ, um, as far as attendees, do they pay to attend the virtual event? And if so, how does that work? 
Yes, so we do have an actual attendee registration fee for IFMA members. It's only $99 to attend the full event. I think the non-member rate's $129. And once again, that does give them a full 30 days access to the event, both the live two-day and everything will be recorded and available on demand for 30 days after. So we'll be uh, promoting, well, we've already started promoting the event. Our registrations are, you know, trickling in. It is still a little early for that, um, but we're going to continue to promote that event. And and um, at the lower price point, we think it's very viable that we'll get a, a number of attendees signed up to date. Um, the other thing is also, like Jefferson mentioned, if you're an exhibitor or a sponsor, you do receive some complimentary conference registrations. That's a great opportunity for you to not only encourage you or your staff to attend, but maybe pass those along as gifts to some high-level clients that you might have as well. So there's another opportunity there for you to use the event to connect and, and grow your relationships with your existing clients. Yeah, th yeah, uh, that's good to hear on your reg fee. I just read a uh, CEIR global research report on virtual events and uh, uh, where they uh, looked at 387 B2B virtual events and the average uh, virtual event was charging a lot more in the $300 range for attendees. So the fact that you have lowered the price to that 99 range I think is going to bring down the barriers to entry. And keep in mind, everybody, as TJ just said, uh, it's early in the game for the digital world. We start to see critical mass on attendee pre-registration in that three-week, two-week window prior to the event, with the attendees really starting to firm up what sessions, their blocks of time, in that five to seven days before the event window. So. All right, that is all I'm seeing questions. So the big takeaways from here today uh, were, number one, out of sight is out of mind. Uh, stay visible, right? Because if you're not, you're opening the door for your competition. Number two, a virtual event has some very unique advantages, very unique opportunities, and it also comes with unique challenges. Uh, we're not going to leave you hanging in the wind. We're going to make sure that you are ready to overcome the the three biggest challenges, driving, engaging, and capturing. We're going to make sure that you are prepared to handle all three of those. And what I would say to you is that if the facility marketplace is important to your company, um, given everything that's going on, this is a really smart play to get involved, show your support, show your presence, bring your best solutions, bring your best marketing, and let's all work together to get this thing reopened because um, we're all looking forward to getting back to live. So TJ, back to you for any closing co comments or thoughts. Um, I, I hope everybody learned something from this. I hope it was helpful and valuable. I know I've learned some things. Um, if anybody has any questions regarding the IFMA Facility Fusion event or any other opportunities to connect with the facility management market through IFMA's vehicles, please feel free to drop us a line at expoadv at ifma.org. That's expoadv at ifma.org. Otherwise, uh, Jefferson, thanks for great training and we're looking forward to the next one on the 18th. Yes, we're just getting started. Thanks everybody. So join us on this journey uh, and we will see you on March 18th and help you get ready to put together a world-class uh, virtual exhibiting program. Enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, we will see you again very soon. Thanks for logging in.